Marami pong mapapag-usapan ngayong araw na ito. Uh, inanyayahan ko po ang uh, mga newsmakers. Sila po yung makapagsasalita tungkol sa nagaganap at magaganap pa. Bagamat walang manghuhula rito sa ating panel, eh, mabibigyan tayo ng updates. Dahil sa kung ano yung nangyari ngayon, malalaman natin kung ano maaasahan natin sa susunod na panahon. All right. Anong naganap? Kay Ruby o kay Hagupit, anong kasalanan natin mga Pilipino at naramdaman natin ito? Pero that's beside the point. We're happy, we're still alive and well. Um, there are certainly issues that we'd like to address. However, uh, yung pong mga tagapag-asa, kinumbida namin, kaya lang hindi makakarating dahil masama ang panahon. Masama ang panahon dahil monitor nila kung anong nagaganap kay Ruby. Yung pong taga-Department of Health, ang acting uh, secretary Janet Garin, inanyayahan po namin, subalit uh, hindi makararating for one or two or so many reasons, tulad rin ni Secretary Dinky Suleiman. But we're happy we have with us Eric Salve. Uh, siya po ang in-charge sa disaster management ng Philippine Red Cross. Si Dr. Claire uh, Reyta, siya po ang manager ng health services ng Red Cross, bagamat hindi naka-t-shirt. <laughs> Narito rin po si Anna Abad, uh, Climate Justice Campaigner ng Greenpeace And we're privileged to have with us Lieutenant Commander Marineth Riano Domingo Acting Director ng Naval Public Affairs Office uh, Mabutit na karating, uh, malayo-layo yung kanyang lugar na pinanggalingan dyan sa Ruas Boulevard So simula natin, ano pong pinakahuling balita sa Red Cross? What have you? Anong pinakahuling datos natin? Uh, sa ngayon po kasi sir, uh, we are very uh, uh, particular on getting on the informations. Uh, very rare po talaga yung makukuha natin information ngayon because of the communication gap. Uh, isa sa maging problem natin, same with the uh, what we experience in Typhoon Haiyan, uh, talaga yung communication napakahirap because of the, the, the typhoon itself. One of the major uh, problem natin is... Uh, Unang-una na knockdown is the, communicate, the power supplies. So power supply problema? Apo. Okay. Pag Yan walang power, walang, kuri walang, kuri walang, kuri walang communication. communication. Although we have some communication ahead of time with the... Uh, we have Leyte and uh, Masbate, Bicol region and the rest of the country. Uh, they are reporting that they have the preemptive evacuation. They have uh, uh, a lot of... Uh, this. Uh, now in, in the, the families that are in the evacuation centers and the weather conditions. Uh, one of our most concern right now is Samar. Uh, because until, summer, until now, we don't have communication with Eastern Samar, Northern Samar, and uh, Western Samar. We have tried to penetrate Samar last night or yesterday. Unfortunately, our team was hauled because of the uh, massive rainfall coming from the mountains na talagang hindi sila makapasok. So until now, they are on standby in uh, Katbalogan and in uh, say, Giwan or Balangiga uh, to wait until such time na maklear yung uh, road. Not just because of the debris, but the water itself na talagang tuloy-tuloy yung agos ng tubig from the mountain. Okay. Uh, sa ganitong pagkakataon, di ba meron kayong single side ban? Yes, sir. We do have communication with a single side ban. That is the, the advantage what Red Cross have right now. At may satellite phones na rin kayo? We have satellite phone, pero hindi po siya ganun gumagana. We still rely on the single side ban. Uh, last night we have the we have the uh, we able to communicate with single side ban na meron kami sa mga mobile which our uh, chairman had a uh, talagang may command post sa command, mobile opo, right? mobile po sila uh, right now na uh, ang team namin sa going to northern summer was in uh, last communication namin this morning is still in uh, barangay tulay which is municipality of Santa Rita and our team going to uh, Eastern Samar Borongan is still in Balangiga. So hopefully they can pass this morning actually. Uh, okay. Uh, sa Philippine Navy po, uh, Lieutenant Commander Domingo, ano pong pinakahuling informasyon natanggap ninyo? Uh, so good morning po, good morning for to everybody. Uh, so far naman po ngayon, um, we're, we're still, ano po, we're still, uh, ano po, uh, 
dependent po tayo sa mga reports in from the media for uh, pero do sa ating mga naval forces po as of now uh, they're still on standby for uh, to assist yung uh, mga local government units natin as to whatever deployment na meron po na dapat po silang gawin but as of now nga po um tuloy-tuloy po yung ating uh, to relief operations in as much as yun pa lang po yung binibigay din po sa atin na na, um, na deployment order po. So as of now po ngayon, meron po tayo sa Cebu na ginagamit po natin yung LT507 o BRP Benguet para para po dito po dalhin po yung lahat ng relief goods and we have one in Palawan also. Uh, P, uh, PS36 po natin, meron po tayo and we have here in Cavite LC551 o BRP Dagupan City so all of these three vessels are being loaded with relief goods and uh, ready for any ano, deployment po kung saan po mas kailangan at um, sa ngayon din po may mga sa naval forces po natin lalong lalo na po sa naval, Southern, naval forces Southern Luzon this is the area na hawak po niya yung Bicol region and yung naval forces Central naman po natin they are conducting uh, limited ano po yung um, clearing operations kasi sabi nyo nga po ngayon one of the challenges that we have here is yung yung para maging maganda po yung ating uh, pa, maging possible po yung lahat ng ating mga mga lines po ng, ng road para po dito sa pagmababilis po ng ating mga pagsuporta po sa mga ano. Do you have sufficient personnel to do that? Uh, the EFP as a whole, uh, we are covering all of uh, uh, all of the areas nationwide po. Mm -hmm. So, uh, maybe hindi uh, pa po natin kasi nakikita kung gaano ka lupit po talaga yung mga naging damages nito. But, but then again, uh, we're trying to cover as much as we can po all over the nation po. So, lahat po yan nakadeploy naman po kami lahat. Red alert po kami lahat ngayon. So, uh, we make sure, lalo, lalo na po sa Navy, all of the naval forces, lahat po ng tatamaan are well covered. Meron po silang surface assets. When we say surface assets, ito po yung mga barko po natin, ready for deployment. Uh, once lang po na, na clear yung ating uh, ano po yung yung sa weather nga po natin maging clear po siya for any uh, any mission and of course we have air assets too po uh, once it's needed po na talagang i-deploy din po sila katulad ng binanggit nyo mula Cebu kung sakali na loaded na yung relief goods how long will it take for your ship from Cebu to reach the areas like Borongan and uh, so far po, hindi ko lang po masyadong sure kung how, how long will it take for them kasi nasa shelter area po sila. Eh. Yun ang problema, uh, nasa shelter area. Uh, nasa shelter area po sila ngayon sa, kasi yun, ang, yun, ang, yun po kasi yung mas, SOP. Mas, SOP po talaga natin based from sa ating doctrina is we have to shelter them first or in order for them to respond later. Mm -hmm. uh, once needed naman po at saka once clear na rin po yung ating uh, ating mga ang ating weather din po. So, in so far naman po doon is ano po, mga Siguro minimum po natin is uh, half, the, half of the, uh, ito, mga 5 to 10 hours po, nandun na rin naman po natin. Maliliit po natin na barko. Ito po yung mga mabilis po natin na barko. In so far as doon sa sinasabi niyo po na first to respond po doon sa area. So, net, ibig mo sabihin talaga fast craft ito. Uh, mga fast craft. That, that, that will be yung mga, ano po, maliliit po natin na mga barko. Okay. Uh, Noong araw kasi merong mga not so fast craft. <laughs> Kaya medyo bagal-bagal lang konti. Ngayon, mabibilis na. May mga fast craft po tayo kasi. Pag when you say po fast craft po, ito yung mas maliliit po natin na barko. But we have a strategic sealy vessel. Ito yung mga transport vessel po natin. But with their, yung mas malaki po to kesa po sa mga fast craft natin. So, uh, considerably, mas not so, not so fast po talaga. Uh, <laughs> yun, ang, ano, yun ang isang bagay siguro Apo. na sa but, susunod pag-aaralan natin Apo. ano pwedeng gawin. Hopefully po, with the modernization efforts of the AFP, we will be having a, a more uh, modernized strategic sea lift vessel po in the near future that will uh, really uh, ano to, um, solve this problem of this not-so-fast vessel. Yeah, very well. Uh, Dr. Reita, as a medical uh, professional, normally, pag may bagyong ganito kalakas kay Ruby, uh, anong karaniwang sakit ng ating mga kababayan? Okay, uh, for every disaster, kasi especially kung halimbawa ang disaster na dumating eh, typhoon, we always check on the people who are first on the evacuation centers and the health needs. So, nandyan yung mga babies, nandyan yung adults, and not so young adults like yung ma may, may medyo mga senior citizen na, di ba? Don't so, look at me. <laughs> I'm just uh, asking. Yeah, okay. <laughs> 
Okay, so first is we we make sure na yung uh, like yung temperature kasi sila yung mabilis na mawalan ng heat sa body. So we make sure meron kami ipo-provide na warm um, towel especially for the babies no to prevent hypothermia. And then we address the syempre kung kararating lang naman yung sa evacuation center, the cough and colds maybe it's not because of being in the evacuation center but we still have to address that kasi the first three days in the evacuation center yun talaga yung makikita natin uh, cough and colds kasi mabilis siyang mag uh, transmit to one person from the other person uh, and then fever especially for the kids so yan talaga yung unang ina attend and then kung merong existing flood around the area we also attend to some issues of uh, possible leptospirosis issues and then some antifungal medications would be provided then and then some attendance also dun sa mga mga small cuts and wounds mm -hmm. so nagbibigay rin kami niyan kay mga topical antibiotics lagi siyang naka prepare for that kaya ko na itanong yon uh, early reports yeah yesterday mentioned of uh, two individuals, a child and uh, an elderly, who passed away because of hypothermia. Uh, I, I don't know whether uh, alam ito ng rural health units, but Red Cross knows about this. Pero how far ha sa inyong karanasan meron kayong datos na namamatay dahilan sa sobrang lamig? So far with the evacuation center, hindi siya masyado. Siguro kasi it just happened na today is December. Tapos ngayon nagkaroon ng sobrang lakas na ulan. So nabasa sila, nababad sila sa lamig. I guess siguro it's not common to have uh, death caused by hypothermia in evacuation centers. Um, but basically we don't get much information on uh, cases like this. Kasi nga provided naman sa Red Cross yung mga um, kumot. Lagi yan eh. Meron naman talaga lagi. Kasi once na we, we, we send the assessment team, we, we really see the need. Hindi naman lagi na food ang kailangan on the first ano eh. Sometimes may food sila, prepared sila. Pero what we see sa areas, evacuation center, let's say may dala silang pagkain, pero wala naman silang damit na nasave kasi nabasa lahat. So yun yung unang ibinibigay rather than the food. Kasi it is not the... the I mean, what we give to the evacuation center is what they need. It's not what we have prepared for them. It's not that. So, uh -huh. I guess hindi common na makita ng Red Cross yung ganong cases. Yeah, thank you for the clarification. Because in some areas, pag in-evacuate mo yung tao, ang laging sabi eh, sardinas na naman. At masaya sila ron. Pero, uh, seriously speaking, anong nutrition ang mapapala kung mga noodles at sardinas ang makakain? Di po ba? Well, nutrition, when you talk about nutrition, hindi naman natin sinasabing walang nutrition at sardines. Because for all you know, sardines is very good for pregnant women, especially in the first trimester. But for now, dahil nga parang lagi na lang bang sardines, parang yung, yung decency naman ng, ano, of being in the evacuation center. I think uh, uh, Eric could give some information on the, some changes in innovation of the relief of uh, Red Cross. Yeah. Sa inyo, Eric. Uh, actually, sa Red Cross, what we are doing right now for the first 72 hours, the, we expect people na nasa evacuation center, we, they don't have nothing. They don't have Wala any, they, they have the, no, equipment, they don't have any uh, anything, anything to, to prepare the food. That's why we, we inject, we intervene on the hot meals. No, yun ang kagad ang binibigay namin. And then on the following days, based on assessment, that's why we, we just only provide uh, food, uh, food relief packs on where they, they can uh, prepare the meals. Kasi yun isa sa mga consideration natin during the uh, first 72 hours, hindi nila madadala yung mga gamit nila sa bahay para makapagluto. Uh, on the terms of the... Uh, Sardines, actually, we have the directives from our chairman. It's not just only sardines that we have to consider canned goods because of the nutritional cons considerations. Uh, that's why we, we, right now, in the uh, relief packs, uh, meron tayo mga variations of canned goods lang. No? May variation ng canned goods? Yes, opo. Yung, yung corned beef, uh, beet loaf, uh, pork and beans. Opo, op, but... These kind of goods also consider the uh, the uh, practices 
religious, of religion, ng mga ganun po factors. Ah, okay. So, may survey kayo kung ilan ang Muslim sa Boronga? Yes, sir. Apo. Pero po. Ah, mabuti kung ganun. Apo, mga ganun. Apo. Sa Philippine Navy, pag kayo po rumisponde sa pangangailangan ng mga mamamayan, <laughs> anong pagkain ang inyong mga tauhan? Ah, uh, usually po kasi uh, meron naman po sila doon na parang MRE natin eh, na yung ready to eat na foods ng mga uh, military. So it is composed of so many different foods inside the pack. So it's uh, basically po ito yung talaga yung goods natin. So, Hindi makikikain sa barangay. Pagdating. <laughs> Hindi naman po. Hindi Ay, po. So, that's clear. Okay. Apa. Good. So basically po kasi pag when you say sa military po, if you're deployed, uh, ina-assess mo po how many days will you be there. So definitely po you have the basic load. When you say basic load, that's uh, gonna last you for the days, during the days po ng entire deployment mo po. And if and when there will be uh, insufficient supply of your food, there will always be yung parang ano po, re-responde po din sa inyo na parang papalitan po kayo. Rigo doon po. Ah, okay. Uh, po. Uh, that's how we do it in the military para masustain yung operation natin. Without the food, without the logistics, the operation po natin, whatever we've been doing, eh, hindi rin po makaka... buti din po sa mga tropa po natin na naka-deploy. So, Neth, without sounding nostalgic, pero wala tayong mga katulad ng Mercano may Charlie Rations, no? Wala. Ah, wala po. But uh, we have our, ano po, yung MRE po natin na Filipino style. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay. Dahil pa, pag naubos kasi, uh, merong papalit. Ah, po. Uh, okay. Meron. In some areas kasi, sabi nila, sa police nga ba yun? Pag naubos na yung supply, yung mag ang nagpo-provide. I don't know kung totoo yan. Actually po, with the Navy po, uh, what we've been doing now po ngayon is yung, lalo na po sa deployment po natin with, with Typhoon Ruby po, uh, with our lessons learned po, ganit, ang ginagawa po namin ngayon is uh, complete pack na po yung parang ginagawa po natin na dinideploy na area. So when we say complete pack po, we have the, do sa mismong team po natin, we have the force protection or security personnel to, of course, yung, to avoid yung looting what uh, yung mga security issues po na natin na na na, na encounter in the area we have also din po tayo we have inter agency uh, personnel po natin na nakikipag-communicate with the LGU and other yung other um, NDRM RMC personnel po natin para hindi naman po tayo at a loss na sarili po lang natin yung nangyayari po to. So, this is in one uh, in one organization po. And we also have this, sabi nga po ninyo, we have the communication uh, aspect na challenges. So, we have the communications, electronic and information system na naka, para may comms ban po tayo, mm -hmm. naka-deploy din para hindi naman po yung nadideploy po natin, nawawala po sila sa ating uh, area din po, okay. hindi natin na hindi tayo nakapag-communicate. So, that's three. And then we have engineering po engineering capability po. So, if they needed to have yung parang support for uh, engineering infrastructure, ano po, uh, um, operations, they could respond to it. So, that's fourth. And we have the sea lift vessels. Ito po yung transport po natin uh, using our um, platforms. So, ito po yung mga barko po natin. And we have the sixth is the clearing operations. So in the event po na sinasabi nga po natin na now uh, yung mga roads po natin is not possible, we will have our, uh, clearing operators po na mag ano po ito po yung mga taga tiba po ng mga mga mm -hmm. na napuno po na nabuwal po sa mga daan po natin. Okay. And we have the search and rescue. So basically po clearing operations po na and then the search and rescue din po at the same time para po in the event naman po na talagang may mga kailangan uh, I rescue the area and lastly is the medical team kasi hindi eh, naman po natin alam na ilayo na sampung layo mga tropa din po natin ay naaksidente or meron din po tayo mga talagang within the immediate environs po ng ating sila search and rescue kailangan po nila ng mga uh, first aid na mga ano po na gagkailangan gawin we have the medical team already there to support yung po kung meron po mga medical team po na nasa area or we have the LGUs na may medical team din po. So the Navy will have this uh, component din po to assist them in this okay. uh, area. Very well. Isang tanong bago tayo dumako sa Greenpeace. May patay na ba kayong, may balita na ba tungkol sa mga patay? Well, meron po tayo mga unconfirmed report. 
uh, kinoconsider lang po natin ngayon yung report sa, I- sa Iloilo na hypothermia report. But uh, there are some report na so far I uh, is not I'm not permitted to ano kasi kinoconfirm po natin. Uh, ang ano po natin right now is really actually last night the chairman si uh, Honorable Richard Gordon we sent a caravan of a response team going to Northern Samar. They are now going to Matnog to be on standby para mag uh, proceed with the uh, in Samar area. Okay. So it's mga landslide area na uh, there are still unconfirmed report of a uh, Uh, storm surges actually. Okay. Pero how long will it take for the Red Cross to verify and confirm casualties? Well, hopefully sir, within 24 hours we we can get some information. Really, the problem right now is the only constraint we have is in Samar. We don't have communication. Uh-huh. We have communication in Eastern Samar with Balangiga, Giwan, and Basay. Basay. Uh-huh. But in Northern Samar and part of Eastern Samar in Katbalogan and uh, was, uh, yung isang area and in Murongan we still don't have the communication okay. area we are relying on our the single side one and uh, uh, sat phone uh, we have installed it uh, actually we have sent three teams from uh, Tacloban with single side one which is right now is really doing the uh, survey along the way okay. ng uh, national highway ng uh, summer area. All right. What's happening from Greenpeace? How do you look at this typhoon? We've had a series of typhoons already. Is there anything wrong with this system? <laughs> um, just to give people perspective, medyo ako po yung alin ang naiiba dito. <laughs> Kasi uh, Greenpeace isn't a humanitarian organization. Um, we are a campaigning organization. And it's very inauspicious, the timing of this typhoon. Because for the past three years, we have been experiencing the typhoon at around this time, na hindi naman siya normal na nangyayari. And also, around the time of um, UN climate change negotiations happening. So the first was nung Typhoon Pablo in 2012, that was in Doha and then 2013 in Warsaw and then again this year so the timing is inauspicious it's 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 as though mother nature is saying that you know we do not negotiate um, and Um, in, in the UN has also ranked the Philippines as a third uh, most vulnerable country to climate change impacts. That, together with other global climate change indices, saying that the Philippines consistently tops this. And that's the reason why um, I think the Philippines has a strong voice in terms of demanding um, the big polluters, um, together with their respective governments, to reduce their carbon dioxide emissions. Kasi yun po naman talaga yung ginagawa ng Greenpeace. To reduce their carbon dioxide emissions because we need to stop um, stop this from running towards uh, further climate crisis. So yun po ang aming campaign in, in a gist uh, sa Greenpeace. And uh, we are also calling on, we all commend the government and other humanitarian organizations because as you can see, the preparations um, that were done were really well, well planned. Um, unfortunately, hindi lang siya nare-reflect with the decision makers and other industries like oil, coal, and gas companies na alam na nga natin, science has already said, they are the ones responsible anthrop- for anthropogenic climate change. And yet, we still continue to contribute further to the climate okay. crisis. Mamaya ng konti, we'll go deeper into that. Mm. Uh, we'd like to open the floor to our friends from the media. Please feel free to ask questions. Uh, please identify yourself and the entity you come from para maliwanag ang ating talakayan. Uh, Simon, will you begin? Yes, please. Uh, a lot of questions from uh, Simon. It's a long list. Um, for Commander Domingo, can you say, and maybe you said it earlier but I didn't catch it, where are the clearing operations happening and is there any search and rescue going on? So uh, we're getting into particulars, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, and so far as the Navy is concerned, I'm, I, I can only talk for the Navy, but not for the Armed Forces of the Philippines. But as for the Navy, we will, uh, we are now having a clearing operations on the Naval Forces Central in Cebu area. Okay. And then we have 
one in Naval Forces Southern Luzon which is the Bicol area. Okay. So, yun pa lang po yun naririnig po natin na magkakaroon sila nagkakaroon sila ng clearing operations. As to the specifics on where they are deployed uh, for operational security uh, concerns, uh, hindi po natin masabi where they are. But uh, but then again, ano na po sila? Naka-deploy na po tayo. Uh, those teams are now uh, working with the local government units kasi hindi naman we cannot do it alone. We're not superman actually. So, um, this is in uh, um, uh, this is in coordination with the local government units. Can you uh, follow up question? Can you say the number of um, Navy personnel, Army, and Air Force? I mean, what, what percentage is the Navy of the military team that's out there? Okay. Actually, nakikita ninyo, malaki na yung ginagawan, ginagampanan na responsibilidad din na Navy with this uh, HIDR operations, or so humanitarian assistance and disaster relief operations. But uh, to the whole AFP, ang Navy po ay 25% lang po ng kanyang population. So, you can only just imagine that another 25% for the Air Force and another 50% is from the Army. So, uh, uh, we're doing what we can. We're doing our, uh, the best we can para po masuportahan yung buong uh, uh, sambayanan po natin. So, uh, sabi nga po natin, uh, hindi po natutulog yung EFP. Red alert po kami and lahat po ng ito deployable po upon uh, signal from the local government units or the, at saka yung mga NDRMC po natin. Um, can you explain to me, and I've always wondered about this, with, with climate change being the main culprit, it, it's coming out that a lot of people are saying it's the main culprit. If these big polluters, if the countries, the, in, the developed countries will, you know, get, get them to stop and stop with the carbon trading and all of those loopholes where they can keep emitting, how much of an impact would that make? I mean, would we see the effects of it in the next year or two? Isn't it a while yet before these changes would even have an effect? Definitely. It, it won't happen overnight because we have to make sure that we don't go over two degrees. Um, but this contribution, if they reduce their carbon dioxide emissions, that would um, have significant effect in the reduction of, um, of the, of the two, two degrees Celsius. But the effect won't be immediate. But for all we, because the carbon dioxide emissions that are still in the atmosphere, atmosphere that's since the Industrial Revolution, that's since 1854 or 1700. So um, it's still there. The, the main point here is we cannot add any more to it because we are going to experience more and more of this. In the Philippines, while we cannot say we have more typhoons, but what science is saying, the typhoons are becoming more fierce and more are strong and stronger. Um, and that's what we don't want. We don't want this to be the new normal for the Philippines. Okay. Thank you. All right. Questions from the floor? From the media? Uh, yes, Sol. Um, nakikinig ako sa radyo at saka nanonood ako ng TV 24 hours a day pagka ganito. No? Ang pinagtataka ko, alam naman na ng mga tao kung ano mangyayari pag may bagyo. Bakit ngayon ang problema? Eh, kasi pag naputol yung power, walang communication. Tapos nadinig ko rin dun sa na dinig ko rin dun sa TV at sa radyo na yung satphone namin every two hours lang kung gamitin kasi nagsisave kami sa power kasi walang ano walang kuryente ang mamura na ng generator apat na libo, 500 watts you know bakit wala silang ganun taon-taon na lang ganyan kala ko ba preparedness preparedness okay so would you care to respond to that? Ayan, maganda yung observation at uh, experience eh. So, paano yun? Bakit, bakit walang komunikasyon? Siguro si Lingoy Alcuas can have uh, an explanation later. Later na Lingoy, okay. So, wala bang alternate, wala bang baong baterya? Sa Navy po ba, in touch kayo? Please. I can only speak for the Navy as uh, right now po. Uh, sa Navy po, we have, ano, we have generators in our di different naval forces po. 
Uh, lahat po ng ating mga naval forces are equipped with the secondary source of uh, of uh, itong kuryente po natin para po mabigyan sila ng power. And as to the uh, Philippine Navy vessels, may sarili pong silang ano, eh, power source. So definitely po. Kaya nga po nun, during the Typhoon Haiyan or the Typhoon Yolanda, the first na nakapag-set up po ng communications uh, natin po doon sa, sa um, uh, Tacloban in Leyte is a naval ship po. This, this is sa BRP Dagupan City LC551. Doon po sila nagkumuha ng power source. Doon po sila nakapag-set uh, up po ng communications ban. Uh, but as to the other uh, entities po, I could not speak for them po. Ang nadinig ko kasi yung walang power source. Yung mga LGU. Tsaka yung mga um, other groups na nakikipag-coordinate sa headquarters dito sa AFP. Mm -hmm. ng uh, mga... Basta yung mga official din sila, different branches. Uh -huh. Nagtataka ako kasi sa training ko, I'm a foreign correspondent. Pagbiyahe namin, bitbit -bit namin lahat. Pagdating nga namin doon sa Tacloban last year, nadat na namin doon, I will not name who. Wala man lang dalang sat phone. Andun nga sila, katawan lang nila, bitbit -bit nila. Aanin mo yun. You know, pagmamalaki na, We were prepositioned before the typhoon came. With what? Who needs their bodies? Ah, okay. Are you referring to? I'm not thinking. Ah, okay. Okay. All right. It's a Red Cross. Well, as a Red Cross, I'm speaking on the on the behalf of the Red Cross. Actually, this is a lesson learned. Also, we had in Typhoon Haiyan, no. So that's why after Typhoon Haiyan, we uh, had a lot of uh, generators. Right now, I could I could assure you, na meron kami mga generators sa mga chapters natin, purposely to support our operation on the chapters, especially the blood bank, sa mga services namin, meron puyan and sat phone. Uh, but of course, isa sa mga problem natin, they always say, actually, we, we really we really advocate actually part of the preparedness is yung so how do you will really re-establish basic lifelines during disaster mm -hmm. yan po yung pinaka yan yung actually isa sa mga basic assessment namin when there is a disaster is to really to determine what basic lifeline is really damaged or affected okay doc yung katulad dito lifeline pinag-uusapan natin communication uh yung bang mga dugo na nakastock sa inyong blood banks, are they safe? Well, I would say yes. <laughs> Because hindi naman namin siya ilalabas kung hindi. So all blood banks have been checked and uh, periodically um, audited by the Quality Assurance uh, Office within the department of uh, Dr. Nalupta, who is the director of the blood services for the Philippine Red Cross. Yung pinaglalagyan nila, hindi kaya mababawasan ang temperatura kung walang kuryente? As what Eric have said, uh, that was already planned. Kasi within the checklist na pinaprovide ng Department of Health, you cannot uh, provide, uh, any institution cannot provide a blood bank if one of the equipment requirement is not there. And The generator is uh, one of the mandatory equipments to be in the blood bank. So no license will be issued if one of the equipments listed would not be there. It's an all or nothing um, transaction. With okay. It. Pahabol na tanong. Meron bang nakastak na gamot ang uh, Red Cross sa mga lugar na dinaanan ng bagyo? Yes, yung nasabi kanina na prepositioning of medicines, ginagawa yun sa warehouses. But, dun lang sa mga chapters mismo, regular na merong gamot doon. So, the warehouses uh, around the countries have been prepositioned with a lot of stocks of medicine. And even if meron na doon, actually one of the plans Eric made is to send off some more. Because we feel the need na talagang meron. And actually, we already have this Um, initial plan on uh, uh, sending the field hospital again, which was used during the Typhoon Haiyan. Ah, okay. Eric, kung hindi classified, magkanong halaga ng gamot ang nakapreposition? Uh, actually, I cannot determine magkano yung gamot niya ngayon. But uh, what we have is actually from the movement, we really, from the, uh, before the typhoon comes in, and 
Meron na. Meron na. And okay. right now, we are still sending additional. How soon do you send medicines to have it prepositioned? Uh, we have actually, aside from the chapters that we have already prepositioned, we already also have in the regional warehouses. This is actually one of the good things that uh, we experienced in Taipon Haiyan, mm -hmm. that our chairman from the lesson learned had established regional hub in uh, Leyte, uh, Cebu, and nationwide. Po. Ah, okay. Is it safe na at any given time meron kayong 1 million pesos worth of medicines? I think more than of that. More than? Yes. Let's say, mga 5 million. I think more than for that, sir. Actually, our priority right, right now is not the food. Uh -huh. Our priority right now is the medicines, water supplies, the uh, welfare itself, and the non-food uh -huh. items. Okay. Because we know food, everybody is giving food. Uh, coming from the Red Cross, will it be easy to reposition 243 million pesos worth of medicines? I think yes. It's more than of that. Yes, more sir. than? Okay. Yes, sir. Because uh -huh. right now, what we are assessing, one of the major problems in the evacuation center, which we have a preemptive evacuation, is the health. The common medical uh, problem like cough, cold, or respiratory uh, problems. Ato branded ito or generic? <laughs> generic, po yan. <laughs> Uh, we don't know the branded of <laughs> oh, Doc. Can I add? Um, yes, please. Ay, uh, sabi nga ni Eric, mahirap para sa amin to estimate the amount. Pero with the amounts that you said, well, I would say it's more than that because it is not solely from the Philippine Red Cross, but the support is coming from the whole movement. And we say movement, the whole 189 national societies worldwide. And as of now, the international, the ICRC is doing its job on sending more medicine from, uh, well, uh, to the chapters in Northern, Eastern, and Western Samar. Uh, I think they're already doing that now because Eric requested yesterday, and I had the confirmation just this morning before I go in here, that they are doing the uh, deliveries to the chapters and communicating with them on who's going to receive it there. On top of that, the medicines po kasi ng movement is not what we have here, like one box of this, one box of that, and one box. It's a whole module of medicine, and we call it as EEC, which is part of the field hospitals that we have. So this is one um, innovation in the uh, health response of the Philippine Red Cross. So you also have fluids? Yes, it's there. Uh, okay. Actually, one of the advantage of having the field hospital is that it has different modules. So we have to assess first what is the need of the area. So if there's a surgical need, we, we give out the surgical module. If the need is just uh, outpatient or medical, we just give out the medical module. So if there comes a time that the uh, hospitals would, hospital infra infrastructure would not be working, which we did several areas in uh, Hayan, like in Ormoc, Giwan and Tacloban, we set up a hospital there wherein all the facilities are uh, being put up by the Red Cross and then the manpower of the district hospitals would augment the people uh, within Red Cross. So it's a partnership between the Department of Health and the Red Cross actually. Yeah, the reason I ask and the reason why I invited the Department of Health to be here is for them to tell us how they preposition 243 million pesos worth of medicines and whether these medicines were purchased on emergency basis and which companies did they buy these medicines from. Because we'd like to be assured that uh, the medicines required by the people would be in tip-top shape. Baka naman uh, mag-expire na yung mga galing sa ibang bansa. Ano po kaya? Well, I would say, I don't, I don't know for the Department of Health. For the Red Cannot. Cross. The but Red for Cross. the Red Cross kasi, the field hospitals have, uh, I mean, all the field hospitals included in the guidelines is to check the equipments, uh, the contents, medicines, fluids quarterly. And it's part of the guidelines. Now, the content of each module is being checked by the IFRC and we cannot just buy anywhere because they have a standard, um, uh, I mean, the standard suppliers where they can get this equipments and the medicines and the listings are all there. Uh, it is uh, packed in each box for every module. So the inventory is listed per box, per pack, 
and then um, it, I, well, I would say expire expiration is really not an issue because it okay. is a there's a standard time that mm -hmm. we would have to store it with us, and then it's a quarterly checking. That's why we have a specific person for the medical logistics and checking out these equipments in our warehouses nationwide. Okay, thank you. Yes, yeah. please. Yeah, good morning. I'm Juvie de Guzman of DWBL. I just want to ask Doctora, yung, uh, kasi ho, napansin natin yung Hayan, to uh, uh, almost two days lang na mabilis siya, no? mabilis na bagyo. Pero this time, medyo matagal siya talaga. Uh, sa inyo pong experience, uh, saan po yung pinakamahirap na type po na naranasan natin dahil parang ito kasi sinasabi ho ng pag-asa pareho lang po yung lakas nila pareho pong uh, nakakaapekto ng todo-todo sangayon sa ano nila pero this time po sa experience natin ngayon kasi alam natin hindi pa bumabag, bumababa dito sa Metro Manila so sa inyo pong karanasan saan po yung pinakamahirap na lugar at uh, sa karanasan ho ninyo yung mabilis o yung mabagal na bagyo w w w is it safe to assume that you're asking karanasan ka sa health services? Yes, or, yes ma'am. Well, I would say for me, ah, <laughs> pare pareho lang eh, kasi we've been doing, para bang it's in the blood of Red Cross, okay. na para bang when typhoon comes, hindi na kami talagang concerned na, wow, wala na naman to. Parang kasi it's everyday life for us. So I cannot So really, continuous lang yung ginagawa yeah, po ninyo, Dr. There, there's nothing okay. really different. Yung ang nag-iiba lang is the place, uh, the information, but Opo. basically we do it every day. Okay. okay. Si, ano po, si Commander lang. Uh, Commander, yung po nga, uh, yung po bang, di ba, apektado, alam natin sa Mindanao kasi patuloy yung mga awayan ng NPA, tsaka ng AFP. Dito ba sa mga tipong ganitong disaster preparedness natin eh, nangangailangan, meron ho ba silang pagkakataon na tumigil naman sa gera at unahin nila tong ganitong sitwasyon? Meron ho bang ganong sitwasyon? Just would like to ask. Well, actually, that's what we've been uh, doing kasi uh, we, we've been telling them na yun na nga, makisama na lang sa ating sa, ating sa gobyerno para sa ikaunlad ng ating bayan. But of course, there are a different uh, group kasi so they have their own operations. So, hindi natin sila control. But uh, of course, sabi ko nga sa inyo, yung team po natin is as much as possible, we make it complete. Kaya mayroon tayong force protection security natin na uh, personnel doon sa so whatever yung mga teams po natin na de-deploy. In as much as wag tayong wag tayo po yung parang kampante or na walang mangyayari. Kasi andiyan naman po laging security risk eh. And uh, so with that po, with that in mind po, uh, in as much as hindi natin sila makontrol, ginagawa naman po natin ng AFP po in uh, the, whole of, the whole of the AFP na para magkaroon po tayo din ng, ng security personnel para hindi po na, maiwasan po natin yung mga ganitong mga pagkakataon o insidente. Oh, yes. Finally, I would like to congratulate the, the Philippine Red Cross sa lahat ng mga ginagawa nila mula noon hanggang ngayon, no? Pero ito po ba'y tuloy-tuloy na ginagawa po ninyo yung, se yung seminar na ginagawa po ninyo sa mga bawat uh, bawat barrio, tuloy-tuloy pa rin po ba hanggang ngayon? Yes, ma'am. Apo, tuloy-tuloy po yan. Actually, we are strengthening more to have actually a Red Cross 143 in the community. Yeah. That our purpose is to really to help the community to be resilient. This is the actually the dream of the Red Cross that in each of the family we have trained first aider, we have trained Red Cross that really know how to predict, prepare, plan, and practice a disaster. Thank you very much. Ang yung inyong programa to identify potential blood donors? Well, actually, ito yung pinaka threat ng Red Cross eh. The, the volunteer itself in the community who really give us all the informations and who also help Saka us yung, uh, blood, uh, blood okay. donor. Kasi okay. sila, is, ito yung pinaka ano natin na uh, it's not na uh, sasabihin mo na oh, punta kayo dito, donate blood. I think it's themselves who really go to the Red Cross and donate blood. Okay. Maliwanag yun. Alam natin kung sino at kung Apo. kailan at kung saan. Yes, yes please. Ayan. Hello. Ayan. Rabina Sido po, Daily Manila Shimbun, Japanese newspaper. Uh, una kay Ma'am Net. Ma'am Net, uh, pakiklarify lang yung na-mention mo kanina na tatlong barko, Cavite, Palawan, and... Uh, Cebu. Cebu. Kaya hanggang kailan matatapos po yung paglo-load ng mga relief goods dito? At saka kailan natin ina-expect na aalis ito going to those areas na pupuntahan nila? 
Uh, so what I've been saying is that we are in close connection uh, with close coordination with the local government unit. So hindi namin alam kung kailan sila matatapos yung relief goods. As long as marami pong dumarating, marami pong nagbibigay ng relief goods, i-imbak lang po natin yan sa barko, ready to be deployed to wherever it is needed. So ngayon po, iniintay lang po natin kumalma ang weather or yung maging safe po yung magiging transportation po nila, yung pag-transport po natin. And then definitely, they could be deployed uh, every, everywhere po kung saan po talaga kailangan. But of course, sabi nga natin, let's look at the AOR, yung area of responsibility na mga to. So we have one in Cebu. So definitely, maldito lang po tayo sa may Central Visayas po siya madideploy, yung kanyang pupuntahan po. And for the Palawan po, yung PS36, uh, ang ngayon po ang priority nila is going to the islands po, yung municipality sa Palawan, yung mga islands po natin like Kuyo Island. So doon po sila ngayon nakatoka. Yun po yung uh, first-hand information po natin. And for the BRP Dagupan City, LC 551 po, uh, on standby po sila, DSWD had been uh, uh, preparing, uh, ano po, tinatransport na po nila yung goods at nagnando na po nga sa barko yung ilan. But ngayon po, open pa rin po yung ibang space po doon for uh, more relief goods para po padala po natin kung saan naman po sasabihin po ng DSWD sa atin na dadalhin po yun. Ma'am, wala pong barko na nakalaan for uh, Eastern Visayas? There are actually 10 floating assets na uh, deployed in the Naval Forces Central Area. This is for the whole Visayas region. Aside pa dun sa Palawan to, may iba pa rin tayo sa Palawan, we have 10 more doon na sa area. So definitely, uh, dito lang po yan, ready for deployment or ready for kung ano man po ang sabihin po sa amin na, na kailangan po nating assistance, they are ready there. Uh, Nakastandby lang po to. Sabi nga po ni sir, they are on their uh, different shelter areas po para naman safety din po sila. But once na nabigyan po tayo ng, uh, na cleared na po tayo for, for transport, uh, transport po natin or meron po tayong uh, mission, deployed mission po natin, uh, we're ready to, ano, to depart anytime. Thank you, ma'am. Tapos sa Red Cross, ma'am, do we know kung mga ilang doctors po yung... Uh, dineploy doon sa mga affected areas? Kung meron pong gawin sa headquarters. Are you asking kung ilan yung dinedeploy namin na doctors? Opo, opo. Okay. As of now, we are uh, we are deploying not the doctors, but the nurses in the evacuation center. We still do not see the need to deploy the doctors because our nurses are well trained. If ang case lang naman is just simple acute respiratory infections, it's just that they have to be equipped with what is necessary to attend to um, symptoms that they have. But for the doctors, uh, we are going to send them when we deploy the field hospitals. And we are now getting uh, the information out to our doctor volunteers that in a matter of about two to three days, they're going to be deployed. So as of now, I cannot tell you how many doctors will be there. How about nurses, ma'am? Mga more or less, ilan po yung... Nurses, just the same. We have nurses all over the country within the chapter, so it's not a problem with the Red Cross on you have any idea as to how many they are? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, you when, we, uh, when we operate a field hospital, we get as much as 60 nurses because they have to rotate on a 24 hours basis. And for the doctors, we have as much as 15 to 20, depending on the module that is sent. Kasi nga, sabi ko kanina, merong uh, maternal and child lang, merong kasama surgical, merong medical lang naman. But it is still uh, uh, would be very dependent on the assessment that we are doing for then for today and the next two days. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Yes, madam. Magandang maga po sa inyo lahat. Uh, Belen Atendido from DWBL. Uh, meron lang po akong katanungan para po sa inyo na ang Nangyayari pong bagyo na ito, ang halos lahat po ay nakatuon sa kabisayaan sapagkat doon po siya nanalasa. Pero, uh, meron pong kung sakali po at hindi magbabago yung bagyo na ito at ito'y malakas, uh, ang kakambal po nito ay hangin na tubig. At kung magpapatuloy, tutuloy na lason at kamay nilaan, gano po kaya kahanda, lalo na po yung armed forces, Kayo po ba inakahanda sa Luzon sa biglaan na ika nga baka bigla po doon tumuloy? Kung hindi po magbabago ang ihip ng hangin. Um, 
Kaya po nang sabi namin, uh, lahat naman po kasi all over the nation po, uh, nakadeploy po ang Armed Forces of the Philippines. So, we make sure na covered po tayo lahat. In as much as kahit na po dito sa Naval Forces sa uh, Northern Luzon. When we say Northern Luzon, it is within the La Union area, yung mga bagyo po. Meron na po tayo nakadeploy diyan. Kahit po sabihin po natin na wala pong uh, signal ng storm po dito sa areas na to. So, definitely po, all over the country, deployed po tayo ready to respond to any uh, incident po. Marami salamat po sapagkat uh, hindi po tayo dapat talaga makomportable o ika nga eh, uh, mag, uh, ano, kailangan palagi natin pong paghandaan at marami salamat po. Okay. Siguro papasok dito yung motto ni Binay. Be prepared. Uh, Boy Scout. Okay. Boy Scout yun. Tess Ramiro po ng uh, Catholic Media Network. And the question is addressed to Ms. Abad kasi sa Greenpeace. So far, you've heard from agencies, government entities, reacting or prepositioning for whatever disaster or risks management. From the point of view of Greenpeace, is this enough? Um, it's commendable, the effort that we are doing. Um, and again, you have to also recognize the Filipino, Filipinos that are very resilient in, in times of this crisis. You know? But what we are calling for, that adaptation is not enough because we can only adapt so much. And if we already know that the typhoons are becoming stronger and more fierce, um, no amount of adaptation will be enough for our survival and the planet. So we need to make sure that globally, um, mitigation efforts are also being addressed because this is not just a problem of the Philippines. It's also a problem problem of other yeah. small state islands and other developing countries that are going underwater. And um, it's a global problem, so we need global solutions. What do you think should they be doing to uh, uh, react or respond to mitigation? What should they be doing? Um, we come from different organizations that have, no, that have focused. What would be your emphasis for them? What would be your recommendation such that they will be able to respond to mitigation and not just adaptation? I think if we work together, uh, because we are also focusing on mitigation, kasi ayaw naman natin tanggalin naman yung focus nila, which they are very good at, um, humanitarian efforts. Ano. But uh, if organizations can work together to ensure that both adaptation and mitigation our efforts are being addressed, that would be a more promising um, effort in the future. Yes. yes. Exactly how do you want them to respond to mitigation? That's from their point of view of Greenpeace. Um, Kasi, yung very so great in terms of adaptation. What do you expect of them in terms of mitigation since you're espousing that very much? I would not like to answer for their organizations. I think I just respond for our organization. Yeah. Recommendation yeah. lang. My recommendation was really for us to join, uh, work together because I can understand that they are working on humanitarian efforts, adaptation, and if we want to mitigate and um, specifically to call on the big polluters, their respective countries, to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions, um, that's the only way that we can make sure that the climate crisis would be controlled in the future. Okay. All right. That's it. Uh, yes, please. Mayla, I would like to uh, respond on that now. In, in behalf of the Red Cross, Actually, disaster risk reduction is one of our major program, uh, and climate change is actually one of our uh, advocacy, really, to uh, inform the public that there are really changes in the climate change. One of these is actually we are doing the assessment, what we call vulnerability capacity assessment, where we really, and, and awareness to the public that re they really have to, to be aware that it's no longer that we, we're talking about 20, 20, 20, uh, 20 times size wound a year or just only to response, but they really need to do just to be prepared during a disaster. Okay. Yes, please. Ma'am, to just add up to your question, uh, uh, sa totoo lang, ma'am, you could see right now this is our focus, but actually, ma'am, we've been doing it every day, every day ma'am. Hindi lang namin po kalaban yung mga, kung sino pa po yung mga lawless elements natin, but of course, we are also countering climate change. As you as you all know, ma'am, uh, the armed forces of the Philippines as a whole, uh, we've been, uh, we've been uh, in... Um, 
in close coordination with the local government units and other NGOs in order to to have these projects na that will elevate yung po yung condition po ng ating uh, ang ating Mother Earth. Actually, we've been having this uh, lagi po natin nakikita dyan sa May Ross Boulevard yung uh, cleaning po natin diyan. We have been uh, doing the tree planting all throughout the year, all throughout the ano po uh, the season po lagi po natin ginagawa to in all of our naval forces. So, uh, during peace time po to, ito po naman yung talagang ginagawa na po natin uh, every now and then. It's not just because uh, sinasabi nga po natin may problema tayo. But ngayon nga po, mas naging intense. Actually, ngayon po, uh, part of our uh, training education program po in the Armed Forces of the Philippines is letting the people know about this climate change and how we could be of help to the whole of the Filipino people in addressing this uh, challenge po ng ating, uh, ng, ng ating mga Pilipino po. Okay, well said. Questions from the floor? Jerry Kibilan po, freelance. Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Kanina, bago nagkumpisa ang forum, pinakita ko yung picture ko, nag, nag humahawak ng placard na no fracking in last September 7 in Central Park West, New York. Ngayon po, ang climate change ang concern ng concern sa atin because we are a socio-economic political animal. This may be a left hook na ito ibabato ko sa inyo. Kung sino makasagot, I would appreciate it. Kung hindi, just say so directly. Okay. The economic impact to every person in this earth, ano ang impact for every change, 1% change of temperature rise, for instance, Miss Anna, can you answer that, please? <laughs> okay. Baka pati kalabaw, madamay dyan. <laughs> oh, ba? Lahat. Baka... <laughs> Eh, kaya nga eh, kaya nga eh. Mitigation. Okay. It's a continuation of mitigation, sabi ni Tess. Yeah. Yung figure po for every person, I do not have the answer to that. Pero what we can, uh, what I can say, which is also has been said by the government, for every typhoon, it eats up about 2% of our GDP. But then, of course, that's just framing it from the GDP okay. perspective. We know that impacts of climate change is way beyond that. Okay. Um, but it's very, very huge. I understand that. That's why I'm very glad that I'm always here in in spite of other forums that I should attend because of the fact that tapatan po ito. 5.3% growth natin last quarter. Tapos sasabihin ng mga economic advisors na in-email ko nga kay Purisima, kay Archie Balisagan, is 7 to 8% by 2015. Can you believe that? Sinasabi naman ni Jokno, they should input typhoons, calamities in their forecast, which they don't. Binobola tayo eh. Dito nagtatapatan. Kaya po ang tinatanong ko yung tapat na sagot dito sa mga panelists. Pakisarado lang ng pinto. May ngayon mga bata. Pakisuyo lang. May nag-birthday. Kanina pa nagkakantahan pare ko. Sige hindi ba? <laughs> Kung sino po makakasagot ng okay. tapat. Dahil ho iba itong yung kapihan na to. I can tell you that. Bahala na si Ana dyan. O, sige. Upo na po ako. Can you tell in other statements? Sige. Go ahead. Will you? Hindi ko po alam kung magkano po yung per person, yung per person na economic impact yung tanong ano because this is not uh, this is probably something that also needs input from the government. Uh, we don't have that figure. At the moment. Uh, and uh, yes, and we would probably okay. need, to, need to consult an ec economist. Uh, okay. Don't worry, Jerry. Dun sa prospects natin yung first edition for January, we'll talk about it. We have some economists joining us, okay? Hindi, hindi, hindi. Pero kukunin natin yung mga dati. Okay. Lingoy, may tanong ka? Go ahead. Mamaya, ikaw tatanungin ko eh. Dati kasi NTC. Communication. Marami, mahaba, ano? Personal ba yung tanong mo? Ay, hindi, po tanong, hindi po tanong ito. Ito oh. yung sagot doon sa tanong mo. Oh, sige nga. Oh, kasi yan ang maganda eh. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> hindi ba tinatanong? May sagot na eh. Okay. okay. Ang problema, yung naubusan ng power. Nabanggit ni Sol na 4,000 lang ang generator. Okay, ngayon, nung ako po ay tamad, nakikita ko po ito sa Japan Home Center, 88 pesos. Pero nung ako po ay masipag na, pumunta ko ng Divisoria, 65 na lang. Mm. Ito po ang unang binili kong murang, by the way, ang importante dito, rechargeable po ito. 
Okay. Pag bumili kayo ng battery ang rechargeable, more than 100 pesos. Whether A, B, C, D, double A, triple A. Ito po, 88 pesos. Meron ng battery. Ha? Ito po, binili ko 4 years ago. Nasira after 4 years. Yung hindi ko ginamit, nasira after 3 years. Oh, pero yung regularly ginagamit, <laughs> Eh, tumagal ng 4 years. Okay. okay. Mga tatlong daan na ang... Ito ang pinangre-regalo ko pag Christmas. Hindi na yung ano, keso di bola sa katanduay. Ha? Hindi di, na. Di na po. Hindi na. na. Okay. Hindi, sira na ito. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Ah, ngayon, ganito po. Ito po ay rechargeable. Eh, kung walang kuryente, paano kayo magre-recharge? Okay. Instead of 50 to 100 pesos... 120 to 150 plus light na merong solar. Okay? Meron naman plus light na yung yung ginaganon. Mm. Nung ha? Oh, oh. Tapos meron pong lantern na maraming alambre. Yung po pang charge ng cellphone. Uh -huh. From 400 to 600 pesos. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, tapos Okay. Tapos? Tapos, merong radyo. <laughs> Kompleto tayo pag disaster mode. Na, okay. Ito, hindi, pero merong radyo na may solar panel. Okay? Ah, okay. Yun lang yung akin na overcharge, kaya nasira. Ah, okay. Uh, ang ano lang, ito mga Chinese products, eh, naglolo ko. Biglang nagbaba. <laughs> nagbabago ng, ano, ng uh, stasyon. Ah. Tataka kayo, bakit yung ano, yung dating Tagalog ay eh, naging uh, English? Uh -huh. <laughs> Kasi di ba yung DCRJ English? Uh -huh, diba? naging English. Okay. So uh -huh. you, have, you just have to be patient. But for the price of 300 pesos to 800 pesos, no? eh, magtsaga na kayo. Okay. Ngayon, ang problema natin sa kumisan, eh, gusto natin yung mahal. Pag gusto natin yung mahal, mas malaki yung budget. Pag mas malaki yung budget, eventually, pag aawayan ng supplier, tapos, pag may natalo, mag magre-reklamo. Okay. Uh, finally, may... Demanda. May, stay, uh, may demanda. Kaya, hindi tayo makakilos. Okay. okay. Pero kung tayo ay simple and uh, common sense, marami tayong, alam nyo, ang, hindi lang ang technology, pero ang China, marami na bigay sa atin na babayaran natin, pero mura. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lingoy. Madagdagan ko lang po yung kwento ng ko sa solar. Kasi nung nag-participate po kami dun sa so, uh, climate walk, yung 40-day na 1,000-kilometer stretch, ano, ang daladala po namin dun solar suitcase. Kasi there were areas na walang kuryente, walang signal, pero nacha-charge ng, ng team yung cellphone nila using the solar suitcase. And in fact, sa isang stops na mga yun, may isang bata na ina-ask mo, and walang kuryente dun sa lugar nila, hindi nila ma-nebulize kasi walang kuryente. Pero charge na na using the solar suitcase. And uh, na, 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 na pagkana naman yung nebulizer para dun sa bata. So, I agree completely in times of crisis. And even um, dun sa Tent City, sa D1, um, you will see a lot of solar kits kung saan na charge ng mga, na, yung mga cellphone nila doon. So that's very uh, useful, especially for the rapid response. In times of crisis, na lang ba Yes, actually, I agree on that. Uh, right now, actually, the, 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 the greatest change ngayon, I could say, siguro, uh, comparatively, uh, 10 years after, before, and right now, Filipino people are very resilient, much more. Kasi, because of Typhoon Ryan, they really realize the importance of preparedness na kagaya ngayon, they have very, ano eh, uh, umaga, We are mga ng yung mga cellphone nila doon. So that's very uh, useful especially Innovative for a rapid talaga. response. In yes. times of crisis lalabas eh. Yes, actually I agree on that. Uh, right now actually the, the 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 greatest change ngayon I could say siguro uh, comparatively uh, 10 years after before eh. And right now Filipino people are very resilient much more kasi because of Typhoon Haiyan they really realize the importance of preparedness na kagaya ngayon they have very ano eh uh, kumbaga uh, proactive in terms of 
pre evacuations ang ginagawa ng local government unit natin. And they really already know how to prepare family preparedness kit. Kasi kung before we are talking about first aid kit, hindi nila pinapansin eh. But now, a lot of people are really asking Red Cross, where do we get first aid kit and where do we get training and where do we get uh, survival kit? So, sa ngayon nakikita namin na maraming Pilipino people really are very aware of ano dapat gawin natin that we are in, in, in a country of really uh, has, hazard areas or hazard uh -huh. country. Okay. Sa Philippine Navy, how has technology affected your operations? Katulad yan, may mga solar panels na. Can we rely on them in the first place based on your experience? Uh, as to the solar panel, kasi uh, limited yung ibang mayroon tayong ganito sa naval forces natin. But we welcome yung mga ganito mga innovations na para i-testing sa mga camps namin. But as much as this is not our competency, uh, we rely on kung ano man yung available dun, na, dun sa area. Like yung mga uh, ito, electric uh, companies dun. Uh, but yung sabi mo nga po, sir, with the technologies po na, na, na emerging ngayon, it's really helpful kasi it uh, it ano eh, it, it enhances our capability as a as a force provider po na ginagawa to even yung yung mga technologies natin as to the communications uh, engineering mga clearing etc lahat it po ito nakatulong sa amin uh, but dun sa iba naman po na medyo high end na yung mga, like for example mga solar panels uh, open naman po ang armed forces of the Philippines for you to ano to bring that technology technology to our camps para ano po but may gumagamit na rin po ng ganito okay. na napaka very helpful po lalo lalo na do sa mga far flung areas natin na hindi abot na mga uh, electric companies they are relying on these technologies tulad ng Kalayaan Island Group yes at Kalayaan Group pa, yes okay. at the BRP Sierra Madre LT57 they are using the solar panels to uh, uh, para iyan na po magkaroon po ng power po sila for their satellite phones, communications and uh, all others uh, na kailangan po ng power. Okay, thank you. Yes, please. Hey, ano na ako kay Lingoy. Just for your information, Lingoy, meron na ngayong ano, uh, flashlight teka muna, teka powered muna. by hand. Okay. Yung heat ng hand. Thank you, thank you. Medyo Ito seryo, seryoso po to. Sir, sa Red Cross, nung nakaraang yung Yolanda, Nagkaroon ng problema doon sa local. May mga local politician na gustong umepal. Kumbaga, okay na ba ngayon yun? Wala nang ganong eksena ngayon mangyayari. Uh, I cannot say wala daw, no, but we are really uh, on, on our seven fundamental principles of the Red Cross that we work independently but in accordance on our Republic Act 172 as an auxiliary to the government. We maintain our neutrality uh, in terms of providing humanitarian services to the public. As much as possible, we appeal to the uh, most of the people, politicians, and the community itself that what we, we do is, is more on the humanitarian services. Okay. So, walang politika? Walang wala po politika, sir. Okay. Wala. Lessons learned mula kay Ruby. Uh, Doon tayo. Lessons learned for kay Ruby ngayon, sir, talagang ngayon is compared to Haiyan. We are really analy analyzing it in the very beginning, no? In Haiyan kasi, sir, napakabilis niya. So, we able to respond within 48 hours after the typhoon. Yeah. Right now, we are waiting. We're still waiting that we can really know what is the real pictures. Because like for example, in Samar, this is with, which I am still telling kahit kanina, uh, hindi namin ma-penetrate or hindi ma malaman what is ongoing because still continues yung uh, heavy rains and uh, or I could say heavy intense rain and strong winds. And that is also what we are forecasting or predicting a scenario to happen in Romlon, Marinduque, which is the islands uh -huh. na talagang medyo mahihirapan talaga tayo to really to access. Okay. Maganda na banggit niyo yan. Doktor Ali ka na rito. Magtatapos na tayo. Mula sa Greenpeace, what lessons have we learned from this? If we are demanding 
other countries to reduce their greenhouse carbon dioxide emissions. I think we should start from the Philippines alone. Uh, we should not add or contribute anymore. Even if insignificant ang emissions natin sa Pilipinas, uh, if we are demanding it from other countries, we as a, as a country should walk the talk. Um, by shifting our energy to renewable sources. Kasi mas marami naman tayo nito. Um, in fact, we're, we have the second largest geothermal energy in the world next to the US. And if we are able to do that, if we are able to harness renewable energy sources in the Philippines, what more the other renewable energy sources? So that to me is a big lesson learned because we cannot continue to face more Yolandas, more Rubis in the future if the solution is right in our midst, right within our country, within our grasp. Sabi nga ng chairman namin, Richard Gordon, let us respect Ruby as we respected um, Hayan, Yolanda. So, kung ano man siya, kung ano man ang binigay niya sa atin, let's uh, accept it. And then, we learn to learn things na ibinigay sa atin, just like what we learn from Yolanda. Kasi if we do that, we, we learn how to improve ourselves, we learn how to innovate, and then we will be better uh, come days of the next uh, event. Sana okay. wala na. <laughs> okay. Yung preparedness sa mga gamot at iba pa. Okay. For the preparedness of everything sa health for Red Cross, um, I guess uh, we don't have much to prepare during disaster because it's a program, regular program of the health services. We have disaster nursing, uh, we have uh, Watson training, we have hygiene promotion, uh, we have it on a regular basis. So basically, it's just a matter of concentrating on areas of disaster, but the activities is just the same. Actually, what we've been doing right now is based from the lessons learned that we had during the time on Yolanda. So, sabi ko nga po, uh, Right now po, uh, nakikita po namin mga lessons learned with Type Ruby is that yung whatever what whatever lessons learned na meron tayo last time we, uh, as much as possible hindi na natin dapat gawin ngayon. As early as now, preparation, planning and preparation is really the key to uh, to really ano, to be really capable enough ng para makatulong tayo sa sa ating mga kapwa Pilipino uh, for this uh, incident. So ngayon nga po, yun yung yun ang nakikita po namin na one of the lessons learned and of course, yung whole of the nation's approach natin na na hindi po tayo kanya-kanya. Dapat meron isa talaga na right now po mas ano tayo ngayon eh, mas organized tayo. Mas organized yung nangyayari po sa atin ngayon. So, we're taking orders from the local government units or uh, we're looking into the possibilities on how we could be more uh, uh, of assistance to them. And of course, holistic ngayon po yung pagbanat po natin dito sa, sa Typhoon Ruby. Yung hindi po yung parang, okay, ito clearing operations lang, ito dito lang sa ano, search and rescue. More of holistic siya, looking at all the possibilities na kung ano man magiging may encounter natin na challenges doon. Hindi lang po siya parang, uh, uh, ito, magpadala tayo ng teams. What are those teams for? So, hindi nila alam, kanya-kanya. So, mas maganda po, ito na, mga, ngayon, nakikita po natin yung mga naging gaps natin before. So, we, we uh, as, as much as possible, we, we, we try to address it, especially with this, uh, uh, ngayon po na meron tayong type on Ruby. And of course, uh, I would like to also thank din po yung mga stakeholders namin. Kasi in the Navy, meron po tayong Naval Reserve Units. And these civilian entities are very, very helpful. Kasi kanina po, I've been mentioning yung mga Naval assets natin at saka yung mga air assets natin na ready to be deployed. And these Naval Reserve Units natin is mas madami pa po yung kanilang kinukomit ngayon na mga floating assets nila even yung mga fish carriers and catchers are ready to this uh, to be uh, of uh, deployed po of assistance dito once they are tapped and we as ma, uh, meron nga po tayong limang shipping lines ngayon na na ano na rin po naka standby din and we have uh, seven uh, reserve units Na ito po yung may mga amphibious vessels po natin na ready to respond at any one time po na sabihin sa kanila na we need assistance from the Navy on our end po na mas kailangan pa po natin i-project yung ating pagtulong. So they are ready po.
What I can really say about the lesson learned dito is information management. Because in Ruby, compared to Hayan, we able to relate to the public the proper information. That's why they very responsive. Na they have the knowledge na oh, it's another Hayan to happen. So kaya merong storm surge. People are become became aware. No, and I really commend pag-asa talagang meron na tayong storm surge advisory na sinasabi nila. So, people became more responsive to this information. Okay. Next Monday, we will have a year-ender, a recap. Ano nangyari ng 2014? We will talk about this disasters, ekonomiya, at iba pa. So, I'd like to thank our members of the panel who took time out and our colleagues from the media. Pwede niyo pong maambos itong mga panauhin namin. At uh, ang advice lang sa mga taga-media, yung pong balita ang balita, hindi po yung tagapagbalita ang balita. Okay? Huwag na po kayong umepal. Huwag nyo nang dagdagan yung mga ginagawa nung ilan dyang nagmumotorsiklo na walang helmet. Eh, kayo po yung halimbawa ng ating mga kababayan. Ito po si Melo Acuna sa Tapatan sa Aristocrat. Nagpapasalamat sa inyong pakikisa. Salamat po.